From Washington, D.C. to the heart of America, welcome to Mark Alford's America. I'm freshman congressman from Missouri, Mark Alford, and I believe in America. I believe in you, and most importantly, I believe that our greatest days as a nation are ahead of us. You know, each week we take you behind the scenes to share the stories, the news, the legislation, to meet the great people that I get the honor of working with here in Washington, D.C., that are helping shape our great nation. One of those is uh, Congressman and Chairman of the Ag Committee, G.T. Thompson. G.T. spent 28 years as a therapist, rehabilitation services manager, and a licensed nursing home administrator. Through his professional experiences, G.T. has touched the lives of thousands of individuals facing life-altering conditions. G.T. has now been in Congress since 2009. He is leading us through the Farm Bill on the House Ag Committee, and I am Pleased to have you here, uh, Chairman. Good to see you. Well, Mark, thank you so much. And thank you for agreeing to serve on the House Agriculture Committee. You know, your enthusiasm, your your passion, your commitment uh, to, quite frankly, to rural America and those folks who provide us our food, our fiber, our building materials, our energy resources is, is mm-hmm. just very much appreciated. I uh, well, love you. having your passion. I'm proud to, yeah, proud to chair the, what, you know, what truly, when you look at it, it what really is an America first committee because of what we do, the jurisdiction that we have when it comes to agriculture in rural America. You know, it's so important to Missouri uh, and Kansas, and we have some listeners in Kansas as well, but especially with Missouri with 95,000 farms in Missouri, uh, number two in the nation behind Texas, uh, big producer in corn, soybeans, uh, row crops, uh, uh, cow-calf operations, uh, it's really the economic engine behind Missouri. And so I'm honored uh, that you and others chose me to be on this committee because uh, of the eight persons in our delegation, uh, I'm the only person on the Ag Committee. I'm following in the footsteps of Vicki Hartzler, who was a great member. Uh, we need representation on the Ag Committee. Yeah, well, Vicki was a dear friend of mine. Uh, she was uh, a sister in the Lord, mm-hmm. um, and uh, as, a, as your great brother in the Lord here, we we share that 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 foundation as well. Um, and and quite frankly, with uh, Vicki leaving Congress, and uh, it, it left a tremendous void because uh, you know Missouri is a uh, it's a very important agriculture state, and and the, one of the things I had made a commitment to is to get that geographic diversity um, to maintain that and to improve it uh, as we we looked at uh, um, looking at looked at the assignments for yeah. agriculture like being on being Congress is a lot like being in high school we each of us know what we <laughs> want to do but somebody else decides exactly. right and so I was really proud to work hard to make sure that you wound up on the committee and you're doing a great job well, thank you it's it's a fascinating committee uh, you know my dad was an AG teacher. Uh, and I had a horse ranch for a number of years and my brother-in-law farms, but I was never in ag. All right. So this is, it's like I'm on armed services. I'd never served, but so I'm learning, um, all these new concepts and ideas and language. Uh, so it's almost like going back to college for me and I, you've got to catch up quickly because we're working on this farm bill, uh, that comes around every five years. It's going to expire in September. This is a very, very important bill for America. No, it is. And coming on the committee, what what I look for is uh, is someone that has a, a a passion to serve America's number one industry, which is agriculture. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost all fifty states, uh, other than maybe Hawaii, and that tourism thing's kind yeah. of caught on in Hawaii. <laughs> they still have very robust agriculture there, um, but it's not just a passion to serve agriculture; it's a commitment to learn, uh, because. You know, we need to be able to to listen, to use mm-hmm. what God's given us, two ears, one mouth, and to be able to learn from, you know, the people of rural America, farmers, ranchers, foresters, processors, and then to bring this back so that we can deliver a highly effective farm bill. I, I happen to believe uh, that uh, anyone can get a farm bill passed if you water it down to the point of being ineffective, but that's not what we're doing. We're working hard to make this a a very effective farm bill that serves not just America's needs um, in 2023 through 2028, which would be the length of that Mm -hmm. authorization, but really to create a platform for the future as well. The average listener out there may not have an interest in the farm bill. They they don't know how it might affect them. Of course, our farmers and ranchers listening do. 
uh, it, uh, let's, let's break it down just a little bit, talk about some of the titles and why every American should be concerned about the Farm Bill and be, uh, uh, I, I guess, an, anticipating uh, that, all right, here's my three goals. And I came uh, up with this early when I was at your listening tour uh, in your home state, we I think it was February. Friday the 13th of January. That was it. It was a fascinating trip. But look, uh, as a novice, I, I'm approaching this as that we need to first and foremost protect our farmers with the safety nets that they need. Because if they don't do business, they don't produce the food, then we don't eat. And food security is national security. Number two, uh, we have to make sure that our nation is fed. And a lot of this program is the Supplemental Nutritional Programs. We used to call it food stamps, uh, but we have a new name for it. Uh, there is some fraud in that. We need to get rid of as much of that as possible. Uh, and we need to make sure that um, the people who truly need food are getting it, right? And then third, uh, and this all, I think, is a symbiotic relationship, we need to make sure that we're continue to be good stewards with God's creation. And there's no better steward than our farmers and ranchers. Now, all great points, all important um, important objectives within the Farm Bill, no doubt about it. Uh, uh, restoring a robust rural economy is a part of that mm-hmm. as well. Um, I mean, there's so much. There's 12 titles in the Farm Bill. And the, the Farm Bill actually touches the lives of every American family multiple times a day. Now, I mean, they, they may not know it. But it is not, and it's not just the food on the plate, which is so important, right? Having access to high quality, safe, and affordable food, and we're we're blessed as a nation uh, compared to much of the rest of the world, and that's as a result of our support and then the hard work for those hard those farm families, ranch families that do that, our forestry families that are working to provide us that building materials and and that type of fiber, um, and and they do it for. Uh, there's no greater in return on investment anywhere in the world, right? Anywhere in the federal government. Let's let's keep it at that. We, you know, what what we do in a farm bill, and which includes nutrition, and that's you know, so that's helping to make sure that people have access to food mm-hmm. and good nutrition. Um, one point seven percent, less than one point seven percent of what we spend in the federal government goes towards the farm bill. But the return on investment, there's no greater return on investment, right? It's, uh, it's jobs, it's the economy, it's, it's it it's, affects our health. It's yeah, yeah, because nutrition is, is a fundamental building block to health. It's a, a better environment, a cleaner climate. Um, it's it's trade, bringing those foreign dollars into our country. That's a really good thing. Um, I mean, there's just so much to unpack there, um, and then. When you look at those titles, it's everything from rural broadband to rural utilities uh, to uh, you know, to research. Um, uh, commodities. To commodities. We're talking about management. digital assets now. How are we going to regulate yeah. uh, that? Now, that won't be a part of the Farm Bill. That will be uh, – I love the fact that as a committee, we can walk and chew yeah. gum at the same time. Because in addition to working on a Farm Bill, we're, also, we're, yeah. we're working on a digital commodity bill, right, uh, that, that will – both of these will – Hopefully, have I, I'm I, I'm really hoping and working hard to make sure we have both of those out of the House of Representatives um, by the end of September. One of the things that I really like that you got passed recently is the Whole Milk Healthy Kids Act. Yeah. Um, uh, during the Obama administration, uh, when they were uh, kind of redoing the school lunches and. Uh, what we were able to serve in, in schools is they got rid of whole milk. And uh, you come from a, a milk-producing state. Yeah, a family of dairy dairy farmers uh, was my family history. And now we're going to get whole whole milk, hopefully, back in schools. Yeah, we've uh, obviously we accomplished that. Unfortunately, it wasn't the Agriculture Committee. We'd had this done a long time ago. Yeah. It's Education Workforce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're right, back in 2010, uh, and it was all in the spirit of of uh, childhood obesity, um, but unfortunately it was just bad science. You know, they blamed uh, whole milk and flavor for childhood obesity, so they, they took it out of the schools. Kids have, uh, we've, we've cheated kids out of the nutrition that comes from whole milk, and it's been devastating to the rural economy because of the loss of our dairy farms. You lose a dairy farm, you, you lose the feed supply, you lose the tractor uh, the, uh, supply, um, I mean, there's just a domino effect of decimating the rural economy. 
And so this bill would restore its whole milk for healthy kids. It did pass 26 to 13 out of the Educational mm-hmm. Workforce Committee, passed in a bipartisan way. Um, and sometime in September, we'll, we'll have that on the floor. Um, we're talking about restoring. Uh, right now they can have, they get skim milk largely or 1%. Mm-hmm. Um, whole milk is 3.25% milk fat. Uh, and that milk fat actually is where much of the nutrition yeah, lies. Yeah, brain development. And it's certainly where the flavor lies, right? We've <laughs> lost at least entire, uh, an, at least one generation of milk drinkers because of that misguided uh, act of Congress, quite frankly, led by the Democratic majority. Um, and, you know, Speaker Pelosi back then, uh, the Obamas were in the White House. Um, and, uh, you know, an interesting interesting statistic is uh, there was a study done that looked at um, the body mass index Mm -hmm. right Um, uh, and uh, uh, it it, uh, and it looked uh, prior to the uh, taking whole milk and flavor out of the schools and and 10 years later after it was out of the schools um, the BMI went up yeah OBC Uh, rates went up yeah because kids were Kids are kids are going to drink something, and it's usually some type of sugary substitute, right. which is not satisfying. So you go back for more and more, or highly mm. caffeinated uh, drinks, and and so it had a it had a negative impact on our kids' nutrition, our kids' health. Uh, it drove up childhood obesity when they took whole milk out of the schools, and quite frankly, it it really hurt mm. the rural economy. GT, we got to take a little break. Uh, we'll be back. Talk more about the farm bill. I want to know. What led you into Congress? We're going to talk about that. And what do we need to do to restore patriotism in America? How do we get people uh, not just to make America great again, but make Americans uh, great again? I'm Mark Alford. We'll be back with more. Welcome back, everyone, to Mark Alford's America, where we give you a behind-the-scenes look at Washington, let you meet some of the great folks that I get the honor of working with helping shape our great nation. Today's guest is Chairman G.T. Thompson, representing Pennsylvania's 15th district in the U.S. House of Representatives. On Thursday mornings, on the third floor, in a smaller ag committee room, we meet for Bible study. One of the first things I did when I got here, and Vicki Hartzler told me about this Bible study, uh, I wanted to join you guys. It's a fascinating, in-depth study and I think one of the biggest surprises, uh, when people say, what shocks you most about D.C., how many strong Christians there are here who believe in the Lord, uh, who, are, who are trying to be true servants and have that servant leadership? And you're one of those people. Tell us about this Bible study and, uh, and why we have it in the Ag Committee room. Well, Mark, uh, that was what, 15 years ago when I came here. That was one of my large, biggest surprises, my biggest pleasures, actually, to find so many brothers and sisters in the Lord that are here. It was very affirming, right? Because this mm-hmm. is not an easy place to, especially when you're getting started, it's, it's rather overwhelming, you know. And I mean, I come from a town of 600 people. And to find myself waking up in uh, Washington, D.C., you know, <laughs> three, uh, f- uh, you know, here four days a week, right? right? Three nights. Uh, uh, it, that was one of the things that really helped me navigate uh, connecting uh, with these fellow believers. And so, and, and I think that's important uh, to, the, for, to, to share that back home and for people to understand it. It's amazing how much people say, well, you know, it gives them hope to hear uh, that God is not done with this country, um, that there is a, a presence. Uh, um, it's a remnant. I mean, it's a decent-sized remnant, I mm-hmm. think, in Congress today. Uh, maybe more believers than what we've have been in the past. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm really proud to host this Bible study in, in uh, one of the uh, one of our ag hearing rooms. It it seems just perfect, right? Because agriculture is about what God has given us, right? Right, and and what we do, uh, even with this farm bill, it's about being a good steward, you know, mm-hmm. to. Uh, with God's creation and to be used it for our purposes as he intended it. And, and so I'm proud to do that. We work obviously, uh, hand in hand with, uh, a, uh, a ministry, uh, Ralph and Dan- Danielle Drollinger, uh, who've just dedicated their lives to, um, not evangelizing government or government but leaders, equipping. but serving Christians, yeah. equipping Christians 
uh, who are serving in government, and they do that at all levels. Actually, they uh, they're they're starting now at a local level. They've have ministries and state capitals. Obviously, they're here in Washington. They've had uh, they have a ministry with uh, the House and the Senate. Uh, in the past, they've had a hard time with this administration getting one with uh, the cabinet. But uh, quite frankly, the the former cabinet from the previous administration still gathers by hmm. by Zoom uh, every week. Um, with a Bible study, those those believers continue and in foreign ministries uh, uh, all around the world in, in foreign capitals, and so it's uh, uh, you know we're proud to do it, you know, and we we feed the soul and we feed feed the belly, right? <laughs> you know, the great breakfast. breakfast. One of the the things I uh, in that same spirit is the you can kind of feel that spirit in our committee in general. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of great Democrats uh, on this committee whom I become friends with. Um, uh, Jesse Jackson's son, John Jackson. John, yep, Jonathan. Uh, we're having a, a farm bill. Uh, it's not an official listening tour, but you, I know you're coming August 14th. Uh, John's coming, and I invited him to stay in my house. Yeah. He has never been to Missouri. Uh, so if you're uh, able to come uh, to the State Fair August 14th in Sedalia, uh, Chairman Thompson's going to be there, Governor Parson. Uh, we're going to have a lot of producers there, and we want to hear from the common person yep. some of your questions about uh, what we can do in the farm bill that's going to help you. GT, we're experiencing uh, a D4 drought right now in my district. It is devastating uh, to some of these farmers and ranchers who this is the second go around, second year in a row, and some of them are worried about losing. They're having to sell off their cattle. Yeah. They're worried about losing their farms. This is We've got to provide some sort of relief for them, and that's what this farm bill is intended to do. It is what that farm bill does. Um, you know, the, the one thing we can't control is the weather, right? And there's no industry that's more vulnerable than the industry that provides us with food and fiber. And so uh, that's why we do have, um, you know, crop insurance, uh, obviously, as you know, we're working together to to protect and to strengthen crop insurance. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see, you know, 80% um, uh, of what was spent on um, on agriculture was ad hoc. It was outside the Farm Bill since the 2018 Farm Bill because it was trade mitigation. It was uh, COVID-related, so CFAP, and it was weather. Um, and so on the weather side, we're, you know, really one of the things we're looking at is what can we incorporate in that disaster relief into crop insurance to strengthen it, provide more certainty, certainty for the farmer. Because disaster relief is, it doesn't come with certainty. I mean, it, it takes an act, a separate act of Congress, usually a bill that's done very emotionally. So quite frankly, it's not done very efficiently mm -hmm. either. Um, and, uh, and the lenders don't like it. And obviously having credit to be able to plant your crop or raise your herd on an annual basis uh, I mean, I mean, I know I, I've met farmers and ranchers who borrow more in a single year to provide food and fiber than what the average family borrows in a lifetime. And they borrow on an annual cycle. They borrow, they grow, they produce, and then they pay the loan off. And in disaster relief, I'm also absolutely convinced that there are some farmers and ranchers till the disaster relief was passed the check that was sent had to go to a forwarding address because the bankruptcy has already been declared mm. and the auction has occurred. And so we're trying to build some of that into crop insurance this time around. Um, and then we, uh, what we do with disaster relief, what we do with crop insurance, it's not like fire insurance where your house burns down and somebody pays to rebuild your house. Mm -hmm. It's really just about helping pay enough bills, a few bills, to keep that farmer and rancher in farming to keep and be in a position to continue to feed us. Because we're losing 1,000 farms a month in America. We have more than 2 million right now, but at that rate, uh, and, and with fewer uh, young farmers getting into the farming business oh, or yeah. taking over their family farm, uh, thank goodness we have programs like FFA who are, are really trying to encourage young people and equip them to be the next generation farmer. But we've got to... Uh, retain uh, our place in the world as being ag leaders. Well, and, you know, the fastest way to national security is food insecurity. And so the, the truly the most effective America First program is agriculture and what the work that we do in the Agriculture Committee. Um, and um, we, uh, 
you know, we, we need to make sure that we continue to be independent in terms of our food security. Um, and, and it's also about the rural economy. You know, without mm-hmm. a robust rural economy, uh, people all over this country, starting with those who live in big cities, are going to wake up in the cold, dark, and hungry. And so, uh, I mean, we have a lot of responsibility on our shoulders with this agriculture committee. And this farm bill, it really is one of the the most important things that we can do, the greatest return on investment, as we've talked about. And um, and I would just, you know, uh, all the listeners here, you know, to be able to, to, uh, to you know, to support Support our farmers, support those folks who provide us food, fiber, building material, energy resources, those who contribute so much uh, in jobs and and in the economy. Um, And, um, you know, for all those who are dedicated to America first, this Mm. is a great place to exactly great place to do that. GT, love you, brother. Thank you, man. All right, brother. You take care. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks for joining us for Mark Alford's America. We'll talk again next week, folks. It's good to have you here. Until then, remember, I believe in you, and I believe that our best days are still ahead of us as a nation. But most importantly, I believe in America.